It's not an exaggeration to say this NAS has completely changed the way I interact with my digital life, my privacy, data ownership, my work, photos, and just so many other things. Synology sent me the DS923 Plus NAS. A NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It's essentially designed to be your central hub for your data that you control kind of like running your own Google suite. Now I'm notoriously kind of against self-hosting things. I like to just work, not work on making things work. So I went in ready for some issues and perhaps not even liking the product. Fortunately, I was up and running in about 15 minutes with my black box. After getting set up, I was pretty overwhelmed. I've had a very specific digital life for around a decade. A lot of that includes tools like Mega for cloud storage, online doc collaboration, manual backups to my own drives with Veracrypt, photos being managed locally, and a lot more. I didn't quite know what I should migrate to the NAS. What should I even use it for? Does it even work well for one thing but not another thing? Everything just kind of felt like a huge risk to migrate over to. The first thing I wanted to try was having all my backups and consolidating my files to the NAS as manual backups to local drives is a royal waste of time and frankly sanity. It took me about a week to get my files organized on the NAS and right away I knew that this would definitely stay, especially since I could have my devices automatically back up to it in the background without my involvement. And by the way, it's actually backing up every single day automatically. So frankly, just the backup and file storage situation alone is a huge selling point to the NAS. It has been completely game changing for me. Photos are next. Way back in the day before I was a woke privacy advocate. Sure, we have order, but at what price? I used to be all in on Google Photos, which I was upset to say goodbye to. It was the happiest I ever was with my photo storage, and to this day, to be honest. Synology Photos has been awesome. It's my own cloud with face recognizing features, easy backups on mobile, location and date tagging, and links and sharing and all these other cool things. It's all in a nice clean interface that has made me just love taking photos again. Seriously, I can't make this up. My photo situation before this made me hate taking photos because I'd constantly think every time I snapped a photo, I'd think about how every photo I took, I'd have to go through the grueling process of manually backing up and sorting through it and organizing everything manually and then making copies. It's a pain in the ass. I don't think this is better than Google Photos, but it's like seven or eight out of 10 of what Google Photos ever gave me with infinitely better privacy and data ownership. I love Synology Photos. Yeah, I love it. Aside from photos, there's a video station, which is my new home for some of my personal projects I've worked on. It's like a bare bones Plex server. What's important here is I don't have to dig up my hard drives and bring them with me when I need to show friends something cool I did a few years ago or back in high school or something. Even when I'd go on dates and I hit like the second or third date and they start asking me for photos and videos, I literally have to tell them, all right, well next time I'll whip out the hard drives. It's insanity actually. Long story short, Video Station is fine. It's nothing special, I'm not impressed, but for some quick video organizing, it gets the job done. Plex is actually pretty much built into the NAS, so you can also just use Plex. The last major media is audio. Synology's audio station seems cool, and not to knock on it too hard, I just don't really have a use case for it. I enjoy music streaming and the various private options of doing so where I don't feel it's worth self-hosting my own library, especially when I can upload my own library to various streaming platforms. For those who want Audio Station, the option is there and it seems comparable to the experience you'll find in Video Station. Now the last two major things in my personal life were contacts and calendar. I really, really, really wanted to host these on my NAS because I didn't have a great alternative with privacy in mind, which is kind of valid given these are legacy technologies that are hard to integrate into operating systems with end-to-end -end encryption. Me thinks the next best option is to at least self-host that data myself, even if it's not end-to-end -end encrypted. While getting my data on the NAS was no biggie, and I actually found the Synology suite for these to be fantastic, Actually getting a usable experience where everything synced across my devices led to a multi-week raid. CalDAV and CardDAV, the legacy technologies that Calendar and Contacts still use to this day, are honestly just garbage to work with. I think where I land on Calendar and Contacts is, the easiest thing to do is to use your operating system's native tools to sync or just using entirely third-party services away from your operating systems and don't even bother with them 
like how Proton Calendar doesn't really integrate with the OS. It's kind of just its own standalone app. When it comes to backups, photos, files, and videos, this has just completely transformed my entire workflow in my personal life. But what about the elephant in the room? Business video production, how this video was made. Each one of our videos here on TechLore can require anywhere between five gigabytes to sometimes 50 gigabytes per video. That's a lot of cheese. Tori is our editor who is a human who exists and does not live with me as many of you creeps sometimes seem to think. Tori needs my footage for videos that she edits and there's still a lot that I do on those videos. In other words, we need a good real-time syncing solution for remote editing that both of us can access at any given time. My theory behind migrating to the NAS is we could combine our production instead of having multiple services into a single place. This theory was very accurate for myself with no issues. Within a team folder, I can now keep scripts, thumbnails, A-roll, B-roll, and everything else we work on back here in a shared environment. That's fast, reliable, automatically backed up, and with amazing doc collaboration via Synology Office. Seriously, people, after we used CryptPad, Skiff, only Office, and so many other things, it was refreshing to have a nice collaboration platform again, especially one that existed alongside all the other files for a project in a single folder, so we don't have to constantly organize things and try to bring them together at the end of our production. With all that said, this wasn't sunshines and rainbows because Tori was pissed about speeds. I mean speed. Hence the bandwidth problem. We figured out that Quick Connect was the issue, as it's not designed for large bandwidth tasks like ours, which involve uploading and downloading gigabytes of videos. Now, Henry, what's Quick Connect, you might be asking? Notoriously, the difficult thing with owning a NAS is being able to sync and connect to it when you're not on the same network as the NAS, aka you're on the go and touching grass. The traditional options are opening ports on your NAS, which exposes you to some security issues, or using a VPN. No, not iVPN, you privacy nerds, an actual VPN to connect directly to the NAS on the go. As a response to this situation, Synology made Quick Connect. Quick Connect routes through Synology's own service, allowing you to easily connect to your NAS from anywhere in the world without any annoying configurations. Quick Connect is almost perfect for something like document collaboration or syncing your calendar or maybe even basic video streaming. But if your goal is to download and upload 10 gigabyte video files constantly, it's awful. So I explored more options that didn't open up security issues, wasn't expensive, and was fast. Tailscale is a remote access VPN that is super easy to set up and allows you to connect directly to your NAS from anywhere, all with end-to-end -end encryption, making it actually more secure than Quick Connect and actually free for us on the plan that we use. This enabled us to completely move over to Synology for the tech lore and surveillance report workflows. Now, aside from just video production, we way back talked about the backup and file situation I covered from that personal section, and that holds true here as well, where everything is automatically backed up and all of our files are securely in a consolidated location. While this whole workflow took me literally months to set up properly after tinkering and figuring out what works and what doesn't work, from here on out, I think this is without a doubt the most efficient and best place for our workflow that we've ever had. And we've had a lot of workflows, so that is awesome. Now, before covering privacy and security, I wanted to summarize the general usability of things, personal and business. First, regarding technical knowledge required to use this, it took me weeks, if not months, to really, really figure out the NAS and feel comfortable with it. Not because the device itself is complicated, though I wouldn't describe it as necessarily easy, the larger issue was actually figuring out how to set up workflows that make the most sense with my NAS and my life. And this journey is a huge reason why this review took months longer than expected. So thanks for the patient Synology and especially you viewers, as I just tried to wrap my mind around this device. While Synology makes things easier for people unfamiliar with self-hosting, it won't be easy enough for people who don't have at least a basic understanding of how technology works, at least in its current state. I'm not saying someone who's not tech savvy couldn't figure it out, I just don't think it's quite the target demographic. Second usability point, consolidation. I've always been a person who avoids storing files on my daily devices. I like my devices to be blank slates that run an OS and whatever software I need, and then rather than each device having its own set of files and unique configurations that I have to figure out how to sync between everything, 
I'd rather have each device just connect to something that handles that separately so everything's already consolidated. Now, with the NAS, I have this. What this means is my devices are always clean. It means I don't care too much if they get stolen. It means I can save money and always opt for the lowest storage devices. It gives me flexibility to move to different and new devices right away. I just really wanted to cover how well that attribute of the NAS fits into my digital life, and I feel like it's not something I see people talk about much, even though it's kind of an obvious uh, perk to using something like a NAS. My third point, and actually my largest complaint, with Synology's usability in general. And for this, I think a picture speaks a thousand words. Now, I'm willing to admit a good number of negative reviews on Synology's clients and software may be a result of user error, given there are millions of things that can go wrong when you self-host something. But while some clients genuinely surprised me in how good they were, like photos in Office, a lot of the clients were meh. They didn't feel polished, were cumbersome to use, and lacked features found in their mainstream counterparts. So I'd really like to see some better clients. Now with those three usability points covered, I just have to say I'm overall pretty pleased with the experience. And usability wise, between personal and business usage, this has been nothing short of game changing. But let's talk about privacy and security and why this is even something I took a look at in the first place. To start with the obvious, a NAS gives you data ownership. You're running your own server and you control how much to open it up to the world. You can host public websites on it, you can keep it only locally on your network, really whatever you want. Data ownership is in my eyes the real selling point here, which inherently gives you a great deal of privacy and control compared to most offerings. To dive specifically into Synology, they are an overall privacy respecting company with a decent privacy policy, clear opt-outs for analytics, a viable business model that doesn't involve data harvesting, the ability for people to avoid a huge number of their own services. With that said, I have two privacy complaints. First, very little of what Synology does is open source, which I think violates the ethos of this device. Despite this, I'm also one of the first people to say that just because something is proprietary doesn't mean it can't be privacy respecting. But in this case, I think there's a ton of value in going open source. Second, Quick Connect, which we covered earlier, is their service enabling you to connect to your NAS from anywhere. They have a white paper that details the tech behind Quick Connect, and you know what? It's good, and I do trust it to be reasonably private and secure. So while it's not a bad place to be, I still feel like it leaves a bit to be desired for people with higher threat models. Now, similar to privacy, Synology overall has a great history with their security, and things like their backup program C2 allow you to conveniently set up offsite backups with your own encryption key, which is fantastic. And there's other options too if you don't want to use C2. For files I need a higher degree of security for, I just encrypt the files before they touch the NAS. You can also set up encryption for team folders as well. When it comes to the security of your NAS, it kind of comes down to your configuration. There are many resources online to help with securing your NAS and DSM, which is the software of the NAS, even has native tools that are pretty nice. So please take security on your NAS seriously. Synology doesn't just do everything for you. Putting privacy and security together, while Synology doesn't offer you anonymity, nor do they promise that, they are not a privacy invasive company, which does overall value security. And given the convenience they add to self-hosting, I think it's a fair compromise, all things considered, even with the lack of open source clients. There are alternatives if open source is a must for you. Summarizing this and like trying to review this NAS has been especially challenging because I really struggle to try and consider every use case out there. But I think that problem alone speaks to the power this thing provides. From hosting your own VPN, to having a family photo library, to a movie library, to your own security cameras, to virtual machines, video productions, office collaboration, or even hosting the infinite number of things on Docker, this thing can do everything except natively supporting WireGuard. And for myself, this NAS has become an absolute staple to my privacy and security journey. Things are cheaper, more convenient, more reliable, more backed up, and I have a huge upgrade path ahead of me. The NAS has become my new central hub for my digital life. But unlike iCloud and Google, this works independently of their respective ecosystems and it integrates seamlessly with almost any device on any operating system universally. It's definitely changed my life. I want to again thank Synology for sending us this review unit and completely transforming both my and my team's workflows. 
I also want to thank our patrons who enable us to keep improving our content and help us spread privacy and security to the masses. Especially shouting out Clark, our brand new anonymous ally. Thank you, Clark, for joining. And you can also join Clark and become an anonymous ally down below at patreon.com slash techlore, or you can be one of the lower tiers and still end up in the video outros down below. All of you are helping us spread privacy to more and more people, and I, I just can't thank you enough. Thank you all for watching and see you next time on TechLore. And hey, I really recommend checking out this video. It's a pretty cool one. I don't know what video it's gonna be.